Um, I mean, also, to, Dal Muir up in Scotland, I can tell you that was awesome. Yeah, and can, I, I was going to ask Mr. Beasley, sorry, Long, to answer the questions that Chris Heaton Harris put. All three, or just the reason that's the one that Bill hasn't answered? Um, I don't think the Treasury has started um, consulting on this code of conduct, but we will be very um, willing and open to discuss with them whenever they're ready to do so. So you're and not abiding by it? I don't think there that's is true. A, I think the code of conduct... Which code? Uh, the Treasury minutes in March 2011 refers uh, to the further voluntary code of conduct within the PFI industry. So what you're saying, as you understand it, is actually the Treasury hasn't got round to sharing that with you. Paula, can you help us on that? If the, where are we on it? Are, we, are you talking about equity sharing? Yeah, now, Harris was asking conduct. about the code of conduct. I, I, was, I was guessing you were referring to the old conduct, not, not the new. The refinancing one's old hat, isn't it? I mean, the refinancing code of conduct we would, of course, follow. Yes. There is a code of conduct on that, yes, certainly. Are you complying with that? Yes. I too thought you were referring to the code of conduct which was mentioned in um, a recent Treasury. It was. I uh, well, uh, can give you page five. Paragraph 4.2 of the March the, Treasury Minute to be I would ask, precise. Yes, you asked a question to the gentleman yeah, behind well, us when they That's why I didn't. But we will <laughs> be very good. willing to, um, con- to talk to them um, yeah. when they're ready. Uh, the second question was on sharing. I would um, agree with um, Mr. Downsley that if um, we re engineer a contract so that there are operating cost savings, which is what's happened on Romford, con- Romford um, and many other contracts, for example, um, Industry is an investor in the MOD main building contract where um, £1.1 million pound per annum of cost savings have been um, engineered out of our, our costs. Yes, Stephen. Well, we work hard, and you know. <laughs> Stephen. Um, can I just come back to um, your, your evidence earlier where you talked about pricing in the management of risk? Are you not also pricing in the knowledge that, but for yourselves, government won't fund certain projects, which they have to do? So, for example, there's a regulatory imperative, as there was with the Manchester incinerator, uh, or there's a defence imperative, as there was with the air tanker, where the discount rate was adjusted and not the Treasury rate at the time was not applied, uh, an out-of-date rate was applied. Uh, so, in other words, government doesn't want to fund things, and so you're able to charge over the odds, knowing that they have to do things which they won't pay for. Well, can I say one thing? You can't charge over the odds because as these projects go out of competition, there are lots of procurement rules. They are not only governed by UK law, they're, above, they're governed by EU law. You can't just go and get a project for a big price. There's competition, and there is keen competition for all these kind of infrastructure projects. So the public sector can be confident that they're getting the right price. Okay. So, so you're happy to that... Tesco's and they're getting so the I ju- that's all I just wanted to clarify. So, so I, Richard, Richard... Richard, 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 Richard 